What if the Thanksgiving story we know, the peaceful feast between pilgrims and Native Americans, was just a fragment of a much deeper, more complicated truth? Picture this. It's early 1600s New England. The landscape is eerily empty, punctuated by abandoned villages and fields lying fallow. For the pilgrims who arrived hoping to build a new life, this seemed like a gift, open land ready to be cultivated. But in reality, these lands held stories of loss and survival that the newcomers could barely comprehend. The villages the pilgrims came across were empty, not by chance, but due to an unseen, devastating force. European diseases like smallpox and influenza had ravaged these indigenous communities years before the pilgrims ever set foot on shore. Whole populations were erased before the English settlers even arrived, leaving behind the remnants of what had been flourishing cultures. These diseases were so brutal that some estimate up to 90% of indigenous populations were wiped out along the eastern seaboard. So when the pilgrims stumbled upon what looked like unclaimed land, they were in fact walking through lands filled with sorrow, tragedy, and the remnants of entire villages that had been there long before. The Wampanoag, one of the major tribes in the area, had been particularly hard hit. What might have looked like an opportunity for the pilgrims was, for the Wampanoag, a haunting reminder of loss. Before we go deeper into this hidden history, a quick shout out to all of you celestial seekers. We're uncovering layers of mystery, challenging historical myths, and looking for truth beneath the surface. If you're as curious about the unseen side of history as we are, Make sure you're subscribed and check out our other videos. Let's continue this journey of discovery together. So back to the story. The Pilgrims' Perilous Journey and Desperate Survival The Pilgrims didn't set out to create a holiday. They set out on a journey filled with risks and uncertainties, driven by a desire to escape the religious restrictions they faced in England. Known as separatists, they belonged to a small group that rejected the Church of England, seeking a place where they could freely practice their faith. Their journey was long and treacherous. Aboard a small ship called the Mayflower, for over two months they endured cramped quarters, seasickness, and dwindling food supplies, uncertain if they would even survive the Atlantic crossing. When they finally spotted land in November 1620, relief was quickly replaced by new fears. They hadn't landed in their intended destination near the Hudson River. Instead, they found themselves in the unfamiliar, rocky coast of what is now Massachusetts. Winter was setting in fast, and the landscape around them was harsh and unforgiving. Unlike England, with its familiar plants, animals, and established farms, this new land was a mystery to the pilgrims. They had limited supplies and no idea how to grow food or hunt in this new environment. Their first winter in America was brutal. As the temperatures dropped, so did their numbers. Nearly half of the pilgrims died in those first months, falling victim to cold, disease, and malnutrition. Every day was a struggle to find food and clean water, to stay warm in hastily built shelters, and to care for the sick. By spring, only a little more than 50 of the original 102 passengers and crew had survived. Desperation grew as they faced the real possibility that their dreams of a new life might end in tragedy. But they were not alone on this land. While the pilgrims saw the surrounding forests and fields as mysterious, even threatening, the Wampanoag people had been living here for generations, having mastered the land and built thriving communities long before any Europeans arrived. However, the Wampanoag had their own struggles. Disease had ravaged their villages in recent years, wiping out large parts of their population, and they were wary of these new arrivals. Europeans who had come before the pilgrims had been exploitative, even violent, and the Wampanoag were understandably cautious. The leader of the Wampanoag, Chief Massasoit, faced a difficult decision. His people were vulnerable, weakened by disease, and faced growing threats from neighboring tribes. He saw the pilgrims as potential allies who might offer protection or at least a way to strengthen his people's standing among other tribes. But approaching them could be risky. These settlers were strangers who might not understand or respect his people's customs. It was in this tense and uncertain atmosphere that an alliance began to form, one born not out of friendship, but of necessity. 
The pilgrims needed help if they were to survive another year, and the Wampanoag saw a chance to strengthen their position. Both groups, though vastly different in culture and worldview, found common ground in survival. The relationship between the two groups would be anything but simple, a fragile understanding forged in a time of desperation. The arrival of Samoset and the vital role of Squanto. With the pilgrims barely clinging to survival after their first brutal winter, an unexpected figure appeared, Samoset, a Native American from a neighboring tribe. Imagine the pilgrims' surprise when this stranger walked into their camp and greeted them in English. Samoset wasn't from the local Wampanoag tribe, he was an Abenaki Sagamore, or leader, from what we now know as Maine. Having learned English from English fishermen and traders along the coast, he was able to communicate with the pilgrims and break the language barrier. Samoset's arrival was a cautious gesture, a way for the Native Americans to gauge the intentions of these newcomers without risking too much. Samoset's welcome was brief, but he paved the way for someone even more crucial, Squanto a member of the local Patuxet tribe who would play a vital role in the pilgrim's survival. Squanto's story is one filled with tragedy, resilience, and surprising twists. Years before, he had been kidnapped by English traders led by Thomas Hunt, taken across the ocean, and sold into slavery in Spain. Against all odds, Squanto managed to escape to England, where he eventually learned English and found a way to return to his homeland. But when he arrived, he was faced with a heartbreaking discovery. His entire village, his family, and everyone he knew had been wiped out by European diseases. The land he once called home was now empty and silent. Alone and without a community, Squanto lived with the Wampanoag, who had survived but suffered tremendous losses as well. By the time the pilgrims arrived, Squanto had become a unique bridge between two worlds. He understood both Native American and European ways of life, and he spoke English fluently, skills that made him an invaluable asset to both the pilgrims and the Wampanoag. When Samoset introduced Squanto to the pilgrims, they quickly realized how essential he would be to their survival. Squanto taught the pilgrims crucial skills for surviving in New England. He showed them how to plant corn by using fish as fertilizer, an unfamiliar technique that helped the crops thrive in the stony soil. He taught them to find and gather local plants like squash and beans, which were better suited to the environment than the European crops they had tried to grow. Squanto even guided them on how to fish in the rivers and gather shellfish along the coast, introducing them to resources they hadn't known were available. But Squanto's role wasn't just about teaching survival skills. He also became a mediator, translating between the pilgrims and the Wampanoag, especially during tense discussions. Chief Massasoit saw potential in building a relationship with the pilgrims, but mistrust and cultural differences complicated every interaction. Squanto acted as a diplomat, helping to negotiate a peace agreement between the two groups. The pilgrims and the Wampanoag agreed to protect each other, an alliance that gave both sides a sense of security in uncertain times. Yet Squanto's position was complex, while he was an invaluable help to the pilgrims, his motives weren't entirely pure. Some historians believe that he saw an opportunity to gain influence among both the Wampanoag and the English. With his unique knowledge and language skills, Squanto sometimes played both sides, creating tension and sowing distrust when it suited his interests. Some Wampanoag leaders, including Massasoit, grew suspicious of him, believing he was manipulating the alliance for his personal gain. At one point, Massasoit even considered punishing Squanto for his perceived betrayals, but the pilgrims, now heavily reliant on him, intervened on his behalf. In many ways, Squanto's life reflected the collision of cultures, each with its own goals and survival instincts. He stood between worlds, trying to navigate relationships that were never simple and alliances that were often fragile. To the pilgrims, he was a lifesaver. To the Wampanoag, he was a sometimes ally, sometimes opportunist. Squanto's guidance and diplomacy were instrumental in the pilgrim's survival, but his story reminds us that history is rarely black and white. Squanto's complex role raises questions about loyalty, trust, and survival in a time of immense cultural upheaval. A fragile feast and the first Thanksgiving. The gathering that would later be remembered as the first Thanksgiving took place in the fall of 1621 
after the pilgrims' first successful harvest. But this wasn't the cheerful, family-style celebration we might imagine today. For the pilgrims, who had endured starvation, harsh weather, and a devastating first winter, the harvest was a sign of hope. They invited the Wampanoag, led by Chief Massasoit, to join them in a multi-day feast to mark their survival and give thanks for the successful crops that might carry them through the next winter. Around 90 Wampanoag joined 50 pilgrims for this event, a moment of temporary peace and cautious friendship between the two cultures. The feast itself looked quite different from the Thanksgiving meals we know today. Instead of turkey, cranberry sauce, and pumpkin pie, they likely ate foods that were available locally and familiar to both groups. Historians believe the menu may have included venison brought by the Wampanoag, along with fish, shellfish, corn, beans, squash, and various nuts and berries. Wildfowl, such as ducks or geese, were probably on the table, but not necessarily turkey. The pilgrims had learned these foods from the Wampanoag, who had been cultivating the land for generations. The feast was a way to share in each other's knowledge and resources, blending European and Native American traditions. For the pilgrims, this meal was a moment of gratitude, a brief pause to reflect on their survival after a year marked by loss and hardship. For the Wampanoag, it was likely seen as a diplomatic gesture, a way to strengthen ties with the newcomers. They had no reason to think this gathering would become a historic event remembered for centuries. To them, it was simply a rare moment of peace, an opportunity to affirm an alliance that might protect both sides from future threats. Chief Massasoit likely saw the pilgrims as potential allies who could help in his tribe's complex relationships with other indigenous groups in the region. For the Wampanoag, this was as much a political gathering as it was a social one. Interestingly, the pilgrims didn't call this meal Thanksgiving, in their religious practices, a thanksgiving was actually a solemn day of prayer and fasting, a way to give spiritual thanks. This harvest feast was something different, a celebration of the fruits of their labor and a momentary relief from the endless trials they had faced. It wasn't until centuries later that this meal was reimagined as the Thanksgiving holiday we know today. The Feast of 1621 would later be elevated into myth, symbolizing unity and cooperation between settlers and Native Americans, even though the reality was far more complicated. The event wasn't without tension. While the Pilgrims and Wampanoag did manage to share this time in relative peace, both groups remained cautious. They came from vastly different worlds, with different beliefs, customs, and ways of life. The pilgrims had strict religious views, seeing themselves as chosen by God to survive and flourish in this new land. They saw the Wampanoag way of life as foreign and perhaps even inferior, though they depended heavily on the Native Americans for survival. On the other side, the Wampanoag held deep respect for the land and nature, viewing it as a shared resource to be honored and protected. This difference in worldview was fundamental and would shape the future of their relationship. Despite the shared meal, there were no illusions of a perfect alliance. The peace established between the pilgrims and the Wampanoag was fragile, built out of necessity rather than true understanding or trust. Both groups knew they were bound by practical needs more than genuine friendship. The Wampanoag understood the potential danger of having English settlers on their land, even if these settlers currently appeared peaceful. The pilgrims, in turn, were wary of the Wampanoag, unsure if this alliance would last or if they could truly rely on their new neighbors. This brief moment of harmony, however, has since become a powerful symbol in American history, often told as a story of unity and cooperation. But the true first Thanksgiving was a complex gathering, shaped by survival, politics, and a mutual recognition of the challenges they both faced. It was an alliance of circumstance a fragile connection that would not hold as more settlers arrived and tensions grew. What we now call Thanksgiving is a legacy that carries a deeper, often untold story, one that speaks to the struggles, resilience, and realities of both the Pilgrims and the Wampanoag, the collapse of peace and growing hostilities. The peaceful alliance that had emerged between the Pilgrims and the Wampanoag during that first shared harvest didn't last. 
As more English settlers arrived in New England, the dynamics between Native Americans and the newcomers grew tense, strained by conflicting interests and cultural misunderstandings. While the first pilgrims had relied on the Wampanoag for survival, these new waves of settlers came with a different mindset, one of establishing permanent colonies, claiming land, and expanding their religious ideals across the region. As the colonies grew, the English settlers increasingly encroached on Wampanoag lands, a direct threat to the survival and independence of the native communities. The Wampanoag had agreed to the initial alliance with the pilgrims out of necessity, hoping to build a partnership that would benefit both sides. But with the rapid arrival of more settlers, it became clear that the English intended to expand far beyond the borders agreed upon in their early peace arrangements. Tensions began to mount as cultural and religious differences clashed. The English settlers, who were primarily Puritans, held strict beliefs that guided their entire way of life. They viewed their religious practices as superior and had little tolerance for other beliefs. To them, the Wampanoag spiritual practices and customs were strange, even sinful, and they couldn't understand or accept the Native Americans' relationship with the land. Where the Wampanoag saw the land as a shared resource to be respected and preserved, the settlers saw it as a gift from God, theirs to own, divide, and cultivate as they saw fit. These differences in values created deep misunderstandings, and the settlers' desire for land soon led to a series of disputes. The settlers often justified their actions by claiming that the Native Americans weren't making proper use of the land, according to English standards. This notion of unused land was foreign to the Wampanoag, who had sustainably managed these resources for generations. To the native communities, the land was part of a delicate balance of life that connected people, animals, plants, and spirits. But the English viewed this land as potential farmland, free for the taking if it wasn't visibly occupied. Squanto, who had initially played a critical role as a mediator between the two groups, found himself at the center of rising hostilities. While he had helped the pilgrims survive and even brokered the early peace with the Wampanoag, his role was now complicated by shifting alliances. Some Wampanoag leaders grew suspicious of Squanto, believing he was using his position to gain power and influence. There were accusations that Squanto was manipulating both sides, fueling misunderstandings to increase his own importance. Massasoit, the Wampanoag chief who had once relied on Squanto's diplomacy, began to see him as a potential threat. Tensions rose to the point that Massasoit even considered executing Squanto for what he perceived as acts of betrayal, though the pilgrims, still reliant on Squanto's guidance, protected him. But Squanto's role was only one part of the growing conflict. As the English continued to expand their settlements, it became increasingly difficult for the Wampanoag to maintain their traditional way of life. They saw their lands shrinking, hunting grounds disappearing, and resources diminishing as the settlers moved in, building fences and roads where forests and rivers had once flowed freely. This wasn't merely a loss of territory. It was a profound disruption of the Wampanoag's culture, livelihood, and spiritual connection to the land. The Wampanoag watched as the newcomers imposed their rules and structures on land that had been theirs for generations, land they had never seen as something that could be owned in the English sense. The peace established during that first harvest celebration was further tested as conflicts escalated. Distrust grew, and both sides saw each other through a lens of suspicion and fear. For the settlers, the Wampanoag and other native tribes became obstacles to their vision of building a city on a hill, a place where their religious ideals could flourish in what they believed was their God-given land. For the Wampanoag, the English were no longer merely guests or allies. They had become invaders whose presence threatened their very existence. As the years went on, sporadic conflicts erupted into full-scale confrontations. Broken promises and violated treaties became common, with each new settlement eroding what little peace remained. The alliance that had once symbolized cooperation and hope for both groups unraveled under the pressures of expansion, cultural differences, and competition for land and resources. Each side viewed the other's actions with mistrust, leading to a cycle of resentment and violence that would only worsen with time. 
This collapse of peace laid the foundation for future conflicts across New England, with devastating impacts on Native communities who would face not only the loss of land, but also the erosion of their cultures and way of life. The Legacy of Thanksgiving and the Forgotten Costs Thanksgiving is now celebrated as a holiday of gratitude, family, and abundance. But the story behind it is far more complex and bittersweet than the simple narrative we often hear. The version we've grown up with, pilgrims and Native Americans sharing a peaceful meal, is only a small piece of a deeper, complicated history filled with loss, resilience, and the struggle for survival. For the pilgrims, this first harvest in the New World was a moment to celebrate their hard-won survival after a brutal winter. But for the Wampanoag and other native tribes, it marked the beginning of profound changes to their land, their communities, and their way of life. As more settlers arrived, this once fragile alliance with the pilgrims faded, replaced by growing hostilities, broken promises, and violent clashes. Native lands were rapidly claimed by the colonists, who saw the American landscape as empty and available for settlement. But for the native people, these lands were sacred, a place where generations had lived, hunted, and thrived. They had deep spiritual connections to this land that went beyond simple ownership. It was the foundation of their culture and identity. The arrival of the English, however, brought a new perspective, one where land was something to be owned, divided, and exploited. Over time, the loss of land led to a painful erosion of native traditions. With their territories shrinking, the Wampanoag and other tribes faced new challenges. Limited resources, disrupted hunting grounds, and increasing restrictions on where they could live. The land was not just a physical space, it was the backbone of their culture. Losing it meant losing essential elements of their identity, their practices, and their community structures. And as their lands diminished, so did their ability to sustain their way of life, as they had for generations. Thanksgiving, as a holiday, wouldn't become a national celebration until much later. In 1863, in the middle of the Civil War, President Abraham Lincoln declared Thanksgiving a national holiday intended to foster unity and gratitude during a time of intense division within the United States. This act solidified Thanksgiving's place in American culture, but the holiday's true origins and the complex history of the Wampanoag pilgrim relationship were largely left out. Instead, a simplified, romanticized version of the story became the dominant narrative, focusing on peace and cooperation while overlooking the struggles and sacrifices of the native peoples. For many indigenous people today, Thanksgiving is a time of mixed emotions. It can be a day to mourn the loss of land, lives, and culture, a reminder of the challenges and hardships their ancestors faced with the arrival of European settlers. Some native communities observe it as a national day of mourning, gathering to honor the resilience of their ancestors and to remember the untold costs that came with the colonization of their lands. For them, Thanksgiving is not simply a time for feasting and celebration. It is a reminder of resilience in the face of hardship and a call to preserve their culture and history. However, Thanksgiving is also a time of resilience and survival. Despite the hardships they have endured, Native communities continue to thrive, keeping their traditions alive and passing down stories, customs, and practices to future generations. It is a time to reflect on the strength of those who survived, on the traditions that have endured despite centuries of adversity, and on the importance of honoring the true history of this holiday. Today, more people are beginning to look beyond the myth of Thanksgiving and seek out the deeper history. Many Americans are curious to learn about the true origins of the holiday, the experiences of the Wampanoag and other tribes, and the complex legacy that was born from this encounter. Schools, museums, and native organizations are working to share a fuller story, one that honors both the pilgrims' struggles and the resilience of the indigenous people who helped them survive, even as their own communities face tragic losses. Thanksgiving as we know it is more than a holiday. It's a reflection of the complex beginnings of America itself, a story of hope and hardship, friendship and conflict, survival and loss. As we celebrate today, we have the opportunity to recognize not only the pilgrim's journey, but also the sacrifices and contributions of the Wampanoag people and the many native tribes who have shaped the history of this land. 
It's a time to honor a shared past, acknowledge the hard truths, and strive toward a future where all stories are remembered. In the end, Thanksgiving can still be a day of gratitude, but it's richer and more meaningful when we remember the layers of history behind it. Celebrating with this awareness helps us to honor the true resilience, complexity, and strength of all those who have come before us.